Introducing Project Pathfinder. Pathfinder's goal will be to teach myself the necessary skills to build a 100% 3D printed rocket. From the fuselage to the fins and nose cone, and even the motor itself. Now in today's video, we'll focus on designing, building, and testing the 3D printed motor casing and nozzle. This was challenging, and we even had a few setbacks. Fiery ones. However, in the end, we succeeded. Hi, I'm the Everyday Engineer. How about let's get started, stumble our way through knowledge like all great engineers do, and learn how to build some really cool 3D printed rocket motors. Let's get started. First, we have to decide what our rocket motor will be powered by. Solid rocket motors typically have a fuel and an oxidizer. I chose powdered sugar as the fuel since it is easy to get and handle. And for the oxidizer, I chose potassium nitrate since it is also easy to get and inexpensive. Now I chose a 25% fuel to a 75% oxidizer mixture. However, this might not be the most efficient mix. I believe it is close enough. In a future video, I will optimize the fuel mixture with this device I call the TMS, or Thrust Measuring System, but that's for another video. Now that we know our fuel mixture, we can move on to the design of the motor casing and nozzle. I chose to print the motor out of Prusament ASA because of its high temperature resistance of around 110 degrees Celsius. Also, ASA is less dense than other materials making the motor a bit lighter. However, Keep in mind that ASA should be printed inside an enclosure that is kept around 35 degrees C if you don't want warping or a loss of strength in your ASA prints. The enclosure is very important for that. To design the motor casing and nozzle, I used Diffusion 360, which you can get for free with a few restrictions, but I think Fusion 360 is still a great choice for a CAD software. The motors are single use, sadly, since the motors get pretty beat up after one use. I printed all these motors on the Prusa i3 Mark III S Plus, which has really been a great printer. I printed the motors with 100% infill, so there are no chance of the flames burning through the case. Now that we have our motor casing and nozzle, we know what plastic to use, and we know what our fuel will be, Let's head over to Pass Me to mix it all together and then load our rocket motor. Let's head over there. So we got our ground potassium nitrate. I grounded it with just a, a blender. Any blender would, I think would do. So I already ground some up, we'll see if that's enough. Okay, so once you ground this up, you gotta grab some powdered sugar, just normal powdered sugar. And then we gotta weigh them out and then mix. So let's grab our potassium nitrate bowl, turn on our scale. And by the way, when you, when you mix something, uh, do your proportions by weight, not volume, okay? By weight. So we got here, and we're gonna we're gonna tear our scale. on there. And we're going to measure out, so we're doing a 25% um, powdered sugar, 75% potassium nitrate. And remember, potassium nitrate is our oxidizer. So let's pour this out. So we're going to do 75 grams of potassium nitrate. Excellent. So that's our potassium nitrate. Remember, if you do, if you don't grind the potassium nitrate, it won't mix as well, and you get a slower burn rate. And if 
your powders are not mixed well because this is ungr ungrounded, ungranulated, then you are not going to get it to burn fast enough. And if it doesn't burn fast, you're not going to get thrust, right? So you need it to burn fast so you get better thrust. So make sure to grind it up with a blender. Now the powdered sugar, I don't think, I don't think needs to be grounded. It's powdered already. So let's take that. This bowl. Remember, this is teared or tarred or however you want to say it. Now we're going to measure out 25 grams of powdered sugar. That's good. Okay, excellent. Okay, so now we have our proportioned out ingredients. We can, well, yeah, we can turn the uh, scale off. And we can close up our grounded potassium nitrate. And do remember that your, your uh, potassium nitrate does absorb water. So do not expose it to water. Uh, to the air so okay this is my mixing chamber <laughs> not, not a not a sophisticated uh, mixing system but I have to do okay. okay now that we have our proportioned out deals let's pour them in here put the lid on There we go. Now remember, at this point, this is rocket fuel. Okay, so there it is, rocket fuel. Now it looks a lot like sugar, so do be careful. That's our 25, again, 25% sugar and 75% potassium nitrate. Okay, so let's take this and fill one of our motors. Okay, so now I have a pretty unique way of uh, doing this. I haven't seen anyone else do it quite the same. But uh, let's see. So we have our we have our um, motor casing right here. We have our nozzle. Now the uh, this is goes on the inside, so it eases the the uh, the gases into the hole. And we have this metal rod. Now this metal rod, you look kind of see a little hole down there. This metal rod goes in here. There's a little hole at the bottom goes in that hole and it kind of gets held up, see? Then the dowel goes over and that's how you compact it. Now this will leave a little hole through the center. This leaves a little hole through the center and that is very important. So let's get our rod in there. Now it's not totally important that it's straight up and down at this point. Now this is what's cool. <clears throat> this dowel has a little hole in it, and we are going to just stick it right in there. Okay. And this is how we will compact. Okay, so now it's amazing, it was full. Now look at that. This stuff really compacts a lot. Now to make your make sure that your rocket motor is good, has has a good thrust, you have to pack it together. The more the tighter you pack it, the faster it'll burn, and the more fuel you'll get in the in the small area, right? So it's very important that you pack it, to pack it safely. As you can see, I'm not hitting it or really compacting a lot right now. We're gonna do that outside. You do not want to compact rocket fuel in a house because you never know. So as we see, that is about as compact as I'm going to get in here, inside. For the rest, we are going to take this outside and compact it further.
Nice. Now we are set up outside where we can really compact the propellant. You should do this part outside just in case the compacting force ignites the propellant. I haven't had that happen, but better safe than sorry. You also want to use a rubber mallet for this as to not damage your dowel too much. Now that the propellant is sufficiently packed and we have around 50 grams of propellant, we can pull out the rod so that we have a nice hole through the center of the motor. In engineering, things are often harder than they appear. Take this rod for example. For the next five minutes, I am going to struggle to get the rod out because I may have compacted the repellent a little too well. There we go. So we lost a little bit of propellant, but now you can see we have a shaft. And that shaft will allow this rocket motor to burn from the inside out. Very important. Very difficult to get this out. That is the hardest time I've had, of course, on camera I've had. The nozzle is the last component we put on the motor. This nozzle actually just friction fits in and surprisingly stays on. In fact, the motor casing, as it heats up, shrinks, which in turn holds onto the nozzle even stronger. I also am going to use a wick to ignite the motor, since that seems to be an easy and cheap way to do it. I got the wick from some old bottle rockets I had lying around. Now that we've built these rockets, let's head on outside and actually see if these things work. Caution to the wise, do not get close to a rocket engine. As you can see at the end of that clip, I actually got burnt a little bit on my hand because I was trying to zoom in on the scale and what the scale was saying on, of how heavy it was. That was my early attempt at measuring thrust, as you can see. It didn't work well. I couldn't see the scale. I could not read it at all. So that, that was unfortunate, but the rocket did work. It did fire, as you can see. It was pretty loud. And I think it was a pretty good success. We're going to move on to another clip and we'll show a few more tests until I actually put it into a rocket and see what happens. So now that we know that the rockets actually work, let's see if they actually have thrust. In this clip, we're going to put it on a car and see if it pushes the car at all. If it does, we have thrust. If it doesn't, then we got to go back to the drawing board. Let's see what happens. So now that we know we have thrust with our motors, let's try throwing them in an old Estes rocket body to see if it'll actually fly. Okay, so here we have it, our rocket. Now this rocket is just an Estes rocket that I bought. Now this does have a uh, launch recovery system, as you can see, it has a parachute in there. It adds some weight and we're not gonna use it. So literally this thing is just gonna fall, this thing is just gonna fall to the ground. And hopefully not break. <laughs> hopefully not break, that's the key. Okay, here we go. We got our engine. Now this engine is too short. So I bought a little, uh, I printed a little spacer. So that's just gonna go in there, all the way at the bottom. We got our engine, or our motor, sorry. Motors have no, can have no moving parts. Engines have moving parts, now you know. This is a motor. This just drops right in there. Just like that. See? Just like that. And then this, uh, we'll screw, screw it down and hold it in. Okay, we have our SD's rocket with a homemade 
3D printed sugar rocket motor. And this thing will hopefully go about 50 feet, 50 to 60 feet about there. So we are fully fueled, ready to go. Let's get this on the pad and see how it goes. We are go for launch in five, four, three, two, one, ignition. Unfortunately, the rocket failed to lift off and actually caught the rocket and launch pad on fire. When you spend hours on a project you really care about and things just don't go your way, it can be tough. However, this wouldn't be an engineering channel without something catching on fire or not going according to plan. Failure is not preventable. In fact, failure is inevitable. Failure is a part of being an engineer. It's how we learn. What really matters is what you do after you fail. Do I go back inside, boot up Kerbal Space Program, and call it a day? No. I mix another batch of rocket fuel and tell the Earth that it can't hold me down. Roll the footage. We are go for launch in five, four, three, two, one, Ignition. Right side. Oh, shit! Thank you to everyone who watched my first video here on YouTube. It was a lot of fun and I would love to hear any and all feedback that you have on what did work and what didn't work down in the comment section down below. Now this video is part of the Pathfinder project series, which is a three part series. Soon I will release part two where we use a custom built thrust measuring system to fine tune our rocket motors and get as much thrust out of them as possible. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for more engineering videos just like this one.